Welcome to the Leading Movement Health Series. I'm your host, Phil Wagner, founder and CEO of Sparta Science. So I'm super excited because today we have Command Sergeant Major Brian Hester from Army Futures Command, AFC. And AFC focuses on three areas, prioritizing people, designing Army 2040, and delivering Army 2030. And balancing innovation and a 10-year plan can often be at odds. And leadership is full of these dichotomies. And Sergeant Major Hester, Command Sergeant Major Hester, made me aware of this a couple of weeks ago of another dichotomy with leadership and humility. Because leaders have to be decisive and convicted, yet humility can often be forgotten or abandoned. So I really kind of want to dig into this, this concept and, and welcome Command Sergeant Major Hester to the show. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks, Phil. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here, excited to spend a few minutes with you. And I don't think that uh, any senior leader in the Army wouldn't be excited about talking about leadership and talking about, you know, humility as a, as a fantastic trait of a good leader and how that, as you described, that intersection between transforming, adapting, changing the Army um, over um, several decades takes a little bit of humility. It takes a little bit of pause and understanding of the environment and know that um, you may you may not always get it right, but you mm. hope to get it about 50% right. <laughs> yeah, and per our earlier conversation, it's better than the baseball stats, but 50% is, uh, you know, it, it does require that humility. You know, why, why is that important when you think about some of the problems, you know, the Army's solving around recruiting, retention, you know, how is this humility, how does that play in, in leadership? And as you look to some of these, you know, areas that you guys are actively working to solve? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd like to start off with saying that people are our Army's asymmetric advantage, right? All, all things revolve around having good people that are physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually um, resilient and ready uh, to tackle today's work and tomorrow's work. So, so I think that uh, when you when you think about that, it's, it's pretty important to understand that we are a service that's designed around people, not necessarily designed around a platform and the ability to transform our service to, to continue to be a, the most decisive you know, land force in the world today and in the future takes takes a lot of adapting, takes a lot of, of personal and professional thought. And it also takes a lot of humility because uh, as you as we talked about a little bit with baseball, you know, 30 percent for a hitter is pretty fantastic for us. If we can figure out what the environment's going to look like, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, if we can get that 50 percent right and we can adapt to the other 50 percent, we're going to be able to get after that goal of being decisive on land both today and in the future. Hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I read a quote you, you made, which kind of speaks to that approach around humility. It's it's the Army is actively combating the stereotype that it's an antiquated organization, right? And this idea that, hey, we, we recognize this is what people may think. You know, we need to take that humble approach and actually go into schools, colleges, right, and start, you know, talking about the innovative things we're doing, right, in order to start building up, you know, the right, people for the future army right yeah i was just uh this week up at fort knox kentucky with the army recruiting command and they were having their annual uh leader conference leader summit and i had the opportunity to talk to all the battalion and brigade sergeants majors and you know i was a recruiter from 1995 to 97 which was was a significant amount of time time ago you know 25 plus years ago and the challenge for me in that recruiting space is is significantly different than the challenges today. But I do think there's some constants, you know, the ability to, to engage with people, tell the Army story, the ability to, to get over um, those, those things that young men and young women may object to with regard to, to thinking about service and having a little bit of humility in the ability to, to communicate that, tell your story, tell the Army story, not over sensationalize it, but at the same time, you know, take a look at it um, from a from a sense of pride, mm. um, from a sense of accomplishment, 
um, without having that, without having arrogance in that space, mm. because humility has a little bit to do with, with not being overly arrogant. And, you know, that, that gets back to just that quality of, of having a trait that is, in my mind, sometimes learned over time with regard to humility. So your experiences, your education, the people that are around you, the people that you associate with, um, you know, what kind of character do they have? How do they approach uh, the challenge of the day? And I talked to the recruiting, you know, battalion and brigade sergeant majors about, hey, just just try to, you know, talk to our recruiters about being down to earth, um, having having uh, being modest in our capabilities, but at the same time, you know, sharing with them that, that our army is is changing rapidly with mm-hmm. regard to technology. Our army is changing rapidly with regard to our investment in in people, and our world is changing rapidly with regard to everything from economics to you know the migration of people to you know education finance all, all these things change uh, make change difficult and if you're not thinking critically being present and then also understanding that you don't know it all and having a little bit of humility i think that uh, being able to communicate that to uh, to people and having everybody kind of understand where their place in the world lies and not try to over exaggerate that or under exaggerate it. Yeah. And you talk, you use the word learned, uh, you know, when you talk about character and humility and, and a lot of the, the listeners are, are more either young leaders or existing leaders. And so what are, when you talk about that learned aspect, what are, what are some key aspects that you see to make sure that, you know, character and humility are constantly like being upgraded, if you will, like a software, you know, for leaders? Um, I think number one, the, e- the easiest thing for me to say is it kind of goes back to we're not we are not comp- computers, right? We don't have an unlimited database and we can't, you know, well, there, there are some people that, that have, you know, <laughs> fantastic recall. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, so realizing that you're you're in a place where you don't know it all but you have a desire to succeed Mm. and a desire to to you know you know mitigate failure but understand that failure is is a is a way to continue to learn you know we don't want to have we always say fail fast learn fast but you don't want to fail too much too fast Uh, but at the same time it's okay to put yourself in an uncomfortable position where failure might might materialize, hmm. and if you if you understand you know the the strengths and the weaknesses of you personally, and you understand the strengths and the weaknesses of your team, that can lead uh, to um, you know as my my grandmother would would say you have to take a piece of humble pie and eat it slowly, um, and. And really, sometimes I think you have to eat it slowly, but you have to eat it um, with purpose, hmm. and so that you're you're kind of taking that in, and you also find that that um, you know if you have if you have a mindset that I'm gonna think about things, and I'm going to take things in around me, and I'm gonna learn from the people around me, and I'm gonna do a little bit of self development, you know. With, with regard to, you know, reading, listening to, you know, informative podcasts, uh, watching the news, uh, but not watching the same news channel every time hmm. <laughs> so that you get you get both sides of the of the, the story. Hmm. As an example, I think that, you know, that also has a space of building, you know, trust in, in each other. And in the organization, which which develops humility um, from a personal perspective, and I, and I also I also fully believe that humility is a personal trait, but it's an organizational trait too. Hmm. So that you don't you don't just think think that hey, you know we got ten people working on this, we've got to have all our bases covered. You probably don't have all your bases covered, even when you have a hundred people working on something or. You know, an Army Futures Command's perspective, 30,000 people working on something. You may miss something. Hmm. Um, and you want to make sure that you, you, you're you inclusive with people that may be able to help you solve that particular problem. 
and not just write them off because you don't feel like that their their input might be important to where you're trying to go. So, so you know, thinking critically, you know, taking good taking advice in and giving good advice when you're when you're um, prompted to is important as as you develop um, humility. And then I think I can I really think that moral courage is an important part of, of humility development. You know, am, do I have the personal moral courage to to realize again that I don't know it all, and that I'm that I'm willing to to bring people in to help me solve a particular problem or challenge, or or in some cases be a little bit of the devil devil's advocate or a little bit of the red team and look at it from a different perspective, which takes moral courage and takes humility. Yeah, it's a great term, moral courage. And, and, you know, some of the leaders, you know, listening may not be aware of, of the term red team, you know, so, you know, talk a little bit about kind of that real quick and how it relates to the, the moral courage aspect. Well, I mean, I think red team comes from us, you know, from a military perspective, we look at ourselves as the blue force, and then we look at the, the enemy as the red force, right? Got it. So what is the red force going to do to, to sort of counteract what the blue force is going to do? Uh, to, to try to achieve success. So that's where we kind of get the red teaming aspect from a, um, from a military perspective. But I also think that that go, that that's a, it's a really good approach, even if you're in business or if you're in industry, right. if you're in tech, tech development, what's happening out there that might, that might cause your, for lack of a better word, your widget, not to work the way that you want it to work. Um, you know, what, I use a simple term, what virus could, could stop it from, from having its intended purpose. So, so that's kind of, you know, when we say red team, we think, of, we think of it that way from a military perspective is what's the, what's the opposing force going to try to do uh, to change uh, or, or create a, an advantage for them uh, or to mitigate an advantage that we have uh, in that particular space. So, so I think that that's, that's kind of how I look at red teaming. And from a humility perspective, when you, when you see people that have a character that's questionable, or you see people that have, um, their, their only intent is to be the most successful, the person that has the most notoriety, the person that's not really willing to, to take a take a look at somebody else's perspective they they will not be very receptive to to somebody that's trying to red team mm. and look at things maybe more holistically mm. and i and i think that there you know people with that much desire to be successful and that much desire to not care what other people think and that much um lack of uh, of of humility and belief that they have the wisdom needed to to get to the to the answer to the question they don't necessarily from my perspective fall into this this teamwork aspect that we we really value as a as a military service so mm. so looking at things from a red team pr- perspective is, is is pretty important and then having the humility to to take in those inputs from the opposite side, so to speak, mm. and then and then figure out how that how that changes the environment. That's yeah, no, that's great. I think, you know, as you know, towards towards the end, you know, I know you've you're you're busy like a lot of the leaders we we interview, so we like to kind of summarize the, you know, some of the key takeaways for the leaders, and and I think one piece, you know, around this learned humility is initially there's got to be a desire to succeed, not necessarily for the individual but for the mission or for the team, there's got to be that curiosity, the desire to succeed. The, the second point is I love this awareness of the red team, you know, whether that, that red team's on your team, right. Or another perspective, right. It, there's got to be a reading and a listening to different channels um, that may be in opposition um, to make sure that you're taking in all the information you have that awareness. And, and the third point I would see listening to you is this, this moral courage, you know, because failure is going to happen, 
Um, and so having the moral courage to be able to weather that failure and continue to learn uh, that humility and that character. Yeah, I, um, you summed it up way better than I probably could, but, but I, you know, I was, people talk about, I'll, I'll, I'm not trying to switch the thing on you, but people talk about luck, right? Mm -hmm. I think luck is the intersection of, of preparation and opportunity. And so if you're not prepared and, you know, you don't take advantage of opportunity, then you're probably not going to have any per, any personal luck if you call it that, right? Right. But I think it also goes back to there's a little bit of humility in that in that space. But but as I was preparing for this today, I I came across a um, uh, a biblical um, verse that I thought was really interesting with regard to humility, and it's when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom, and that's Proverbs eleven two. And I think that's really powerful to think about in this in this space, um, you know, with with desire to be successful, with the awareness of the things that are going on around you and having somebody at least attempt to offer you a, an opposite perspective. And then, you know, when it's time to make a decision and it's time to move out, uh, do you have the, the personal and the moral courage to, to get after that? And in most cases, all three of those things come with the last part of that that Bible verse, which is wisdom mm. or maturity, um, really help to to solidify your space with regard to humility. Because you have to perform. You have to know that there's going to be pressure to perform. You have to know that people are going to be watching to see what you're, you are going to do personally and professionally. And then you have to know that, that at some point you should, you should, Make sure that the credit doesn't look like it belongs to you. It looks like it belongs to the team. That mm -hmm. takes wisdom, and that takes maturity, and that takes humility. Well said. Well said. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you, you giving me an opportunity to do this. And for, for all those folks out there listening, um, thanks for being good Americans. Our country's worth it. And you're worth it. And um, I look forward to seeing you out there uh, on my travels. And if you're you're in the Army, be all you can be. And if you're not, join us and be all you can be. <laughs>